Welcome back, I'm Costa from Ford Know-How. Today we're going to be looking at next generation ranges, adaptive cruise control, intelligent adaptive cruise control, the traffic sign recognition system, as well as the lane keep assist we're going to touch on slightly, and the stop start functionality of the intelligent adaptive cruise control. Worth pointing out, just, just underneath here, that's where the intelligent adaptive cruise control and adaptive cruise control radar sits. So, that's all fitted in there and that's actually detecting and reading um, the situation in front of the vehicle. So to begin with, you click the button, the, the car icon in the top right hand corner. You go into the driver assist menu. Um, inside the driver assist you click on additional settings. And under additional settings, let's minimize that, sorry. So we're going to the cruise control. We expand that menu. So if you click on normal cruise control, it gives you a warning cruise control active adaptive braking is off. And if you select adaptive cruise control, all these menus become available to you. So when you select speed sign recognition, the tolerance menu becomes available along with this drop down. And inside that drop down, you can select your tolerances based on the speed sign that it's detected so you can ask it to give you a one or two kilometer tolerance over the speed limit or you can ask it to give you a one or two kilometer tolerance below of course you can set the tolerance a lot more than one or two in either direction so for today we're going to be setting the tolerance to minus one so if the speed 60 we want it to maintain 59 you can then minimize that menu and that is our cruise control menu along with all the options. If you ever want a reminder of what any of them mean, you can just hit this I icon over there and it brings up an explanation. So adaptive cruise and it tells you what it does, maintaining distances to vehicles based on speeds and distance gaps. Over there. Speed sign recognition automatically adjust your set vehicle speed to the posted speed limit and selected tolerance. So there you go. So the tolerance allows you up to a maximum 20 miles or 30 kilometers an hour overall under the posted speed limit. We switch it on with this button. Once it comes on, it, it's, it's in standby because we're not driving. On the right hand side, it gives you your following distance menu which goes away after a certain amount of time and then it gives you that full screen. You can see the green round circle around where it's going to detect a speed sign. So that's set, that tells you that our speed sign recognition is set. If I switch that off, you can see that that green border has gone away. Let's just switch it on so you can see it in the inverse and there's the green border back up. That's how you know that the adaptive cruise is going to be reading speed signs and setting the speed based on those speed signs inside the tolerances that you've set in the menu over here. As we start driving, I'll show you a good example of how that works and uh, how that indicator picks up the traffic signs and how it sets the speed. I want to start off by explaining which buttons relate to the cruise control. So it's everything above the silver line. Below the silver line is your audio button, so everything above that line. This is this button here is just the system on and off. This one is to use the speed limiter, which we're not going to demonstrate today, but that's where you would use it. This center console is actually a toggle button, and it has three functions. You can either press it in, or you can dial it up or dial it down. When you dial it up, it's to increase speed. To dial, when you dial down, it's to decrease speed. And when you press it, it has two purposes. You can either cancel the cruise control where you've set it, or you can resume it. So that's the cancel, resume button. This button over here uses, it sets your following distance in time. And the bottom one is your lane departure or lane keep assist. You'll notice that we've got the GoPro set up on the dash here and on the bonnet. We've set it up to speed sign recognition. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that the speed sign recognition on the dash says 40 and it's got a, a green ring around it with a little arrow. 
that means that the adaptive cruise is set up to sync with whatever traffic sign it reads on the road. One of the good things about setting it up with traffic sign recognition is that as you drive it reads traffic signs and it sets your cruise to the correct speed. In our case it will set it to one kilometer below whatever the traffic sign says. So there we go, it's cruising at 39. We do have some speed bumps on this road, so I'm gonna to have to slow down for them. And then I can brake. When I brake, it deactivates the cruise. In the previous generation cruise, you had to get to 30 before you could use the resume button. On these next gen Rangers, they've actually reduced that to 20, which is really handy, especially when you're traveling on low speed roads like the one we're on now because normally it would take you a lot longer to get to 30 in a 40 kilometer zone, whereas here you just got to get to 20 and hit the resume button and then it picks up from there. By reducing the adaptive cruise um, minimum speed to 20, it also means that you can now reduce your cruising speeds into the 25 or 20 zone, um, whereas before you could only reduce it to 30. So what is start stop? So start stop is the ability for the intelligent adaptive cruise to bring the vehicle to a complete stop and to start it up again without you having to deactivate or reactivate the system. So speed sign recognition, like we said, you get the green circle around the speed sign. As we come out here, you'll see the speed sign says 60 and my smart cruise goes to 60. Now where it can trick you out on that side road, it says 40. And you'll see now when we actually drive past it, it's gonna pick up that 40 and it's gonna slow us down. So there you gotta be careful because our speed limit here is actually 60. So I've manually set it back to 60 even though my speed sign recognition is now flashing 40 and thinks that, thinks that I'm going faster than the speed limit, but I'm not. It's because it read that sign there. So um, we're coming up to a 60 sign here now and you're gonna see it's gonna read the 60 sign and it's gonna adjust and it's gonna go back to my pre-settings where I set to it, keep it one kilometer below the speed limit. So you can see it's set it to 59 in the 60 zone. What they've done with the display screen is they have changed it. it it's now like the one you see in front of us. All the, the graphics have changed. What they've taken away is your following distance. So when you use the following distance button, an extra screen comes up on the right hand side with the bars that shows you what your following distance is. In the old system, those bars used to be active all the time. You can see in front of us now, the system has picked up the car in front of us. It's gonna bring us to a complete stop because it is fitted with a stop start functionality. And my foot is not on the pedal. I haven't touched the brake. The car's come to a complete stop. It's even switched off the engine, but that's part of the um, engine on off functionality. When the car in front of us goes, I just have to hit the resume button. It starts up the engine and it starts pulling off. So that's the stop to start. And the, the quickest and easiest way to figure out if the car has this functionality or not is the electric handbrake. It needs to have the electric handbrake for the start stop functionality of the intelligent adaptive cruise. Even in the current ranges, the ones that are fitted with intelligent adaptive cruise also have the electric park brake and the ones that don't so the xls and xls's will have a manual handbrake so this one this one will bring us to a complete stop and there we go again so i haven't touched the pedals it also switches off the engine it's definitely a big improvement on the old one um, previous generation ranger didn't have the stop start functionality it didn't have the um, the electric brake so it wasn't as easy to use in traffic it was really the original version of these systems were primarily designed to be used on expressways at the moment we've got the following distance set to two bars which is two seconds so you can see with the car in front of us we've got more than two seconds so it's cruising at our 59 if i change lanes now to the right the car in front of me is less than two seconds ahead of me so it's actually slowing me down I haven't touched the pedals um, and it's now matching the speed and it's increased the following distance. If I reduce this to one bar, you'll see the car will 
our car will actually pull in closer to the car in front of it because I've reduced the following distance to one second. In this instance, it's not reducing because we are both maintaining the speed limit. Here we're coming into some roadworks. It should pick up that 40 kilometers an hour over there and reduce us. See, in this instance, it didn't. So you can't always rely on the traffic sign recognition because sometimes it can miss a sign. So I've manually reduced it to 40 now. And it's slowing us down again. So at no point on this journey so far have I used any of my pedals. The car's been accelerating and braking for me. Even in this slow situation here where the cars are creeping along, I still haven't had to press anything. One of the improvements in my opinion on the old system is that it actually takes it a little bit longer to go into the, into the stop position, which is really handy when you get into traffic situations that are crawling along, because you don't want it going into the stopped scenario too early, because then that means that you have to manually start it up again or resume it. So you can see there the word stopped has come up. As soon as that word stopped comes up, it means that it's in the stopped position, meaning that once that car in front of me goes, I have to hit the resume button to get going again, it will not resume on its own. Next generation Ranger, all the models get adaptive cruise control, but you need to get to at least the XLT, like the one we're driving here now, to get the intelligent adaptive cruise. So from XLT onwards, you get an intelligent adaptive cruise, XL and XLS gets adaptive cruise control. You can still use intelligent adaptive cruise, and not use the speed sign functionality of it. One of the things I have noticed with, with this newer version of the next gen cruise is that it, it's much better at reading the, the, the corners and as we go through bends, um, I, I seem to think that it might be linked to the, to the steering position because in the more traditional or older versions of the intelligent adaptive cruise, as, as you were coming around a corner like we're doing now to the right, if there was a, a car going slowly in that left-hand lane, uh, the, the, the radar would detect it in a straight line and start slowing you down. Uh, where I found with this newer one uh, that it, it, it doesn't seem to, to, to do that as often. So I, I think that they've improved it and allowed it to start understanding the position of the steering wheel um, and, and adjusting for that. You do notice when when you're driving on the expressway, you can tell straight away which cars are using adaptive cruise and which ones aren't. The ones that don't use it tend to accelerate and decelerate, constantly change their speed. And that happens naturally when your foot is on the accelerator because we're all human and we're all just either accelerating a little bit too much or a little bit too, too little. And so we tend to go up and down, up and down. Whereas with the smart cruise, um, it just engages the speed that you set it to, paces the car in front of it, and just keeps a nice flow with the traffic. Um, really useful on long downhills like the one we're going on now. Again, I don't have to worry about riding the brake or keeping my foot on the brake. Um, the adaptive cruise control will first use engine compression to try and keep the car at the optimum speed. And if that's not working, it will likely feather the brake as well um, to reduce and hold the set speed. But you can see here, uh, under normal circumstances, I would normally, I would have to keep my foot on the brake or try to manually find the right gear um, to hold the right speed all the way down this long de descent. Uh, whereas the Smart Cruise takes all that stress away from me. All I have to really do is steer. And uh, with the Lane Keep Assist system, it's even helping me steer as well. If you want to learn more about the display and some of the other functions that it has, look at, have a look at one of our other videos that we have posted above. We have made a lot of videos on next gen and on Ford in general. If you've got any ideas or anything else that you'd like us to cover off on, feel free to leave some comments below and we'll have a look at them.